Good evening aspirants welcome to daily news analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy today's date is 17th May 2024 displayed here are the list of topics we're going to see today now without wasting any time let us get into the discussion look at this previous year prelims question to answer this question we have to know about what is bioremediation bioremediation is a treatment that uses naturally occurring organisms to break down hazardous substance into less toxic or non toxic substance it uses microorganisms to degrade organic contaminants in soil, groundwater, sludge and solids. It is most commonly used to clean up pollutions by enhancing the same biodegradation process that occurs in nature. So the statement 1 is correct. Now look at the second statement. Any contaminant with a heavy metal such as cadmium and lead can be readily and completely treated by bioremediation using microorganisms. This statement is incorrect. Not all contaminants are easily treated by bioremediation. It is limited only to biodegradable compounds. Being a biological process, it has many limiting factors like the type of environmental growth conditions, type of microorganisms used, type of nutrient requirements and type of contaminants. So the statement 2 is incorrect. Now look at the third statement. Bioremediation is a use of microorganisms, mainly bacteria and fungi to degrade the environmental contaminants into less toxic forms. Genetic engineering can be used to create microorganism specifically designed for bioremediation. This statement is correct. So the correct answer for this question is option C, 1 and 3 only. Look at this prelims question. The nuclear security summits are periodically held under the aegis of United Nations. The International Panel on Fissile Materials is an organ of International Atomic Energy Agency. Which of the statements above are correct? See, the two statements are incorrect. Now let us see why they are incorrect. Now look at the first statement. Nuclear security summits are periodically held under the aegis of United Nations. Nuclear security summits are a series of summits initiated by US President Barack Obama in 2010 to address the threat of nuclear terrorism. The summits are aimed at securing nuclear material and preventing it from falling into the hands of terrorists. The summits are not organized by United Nations but by the participating countries themselves. So the statement 1 is incorrect. Now look at the second statement. The International Panel on Fissile Material is an organ of International Atomic Energy Agency. This international panel is an independent group of experts from 17 countries and it is not an organ of International Atomic Energy Agency. So the statement given here is incorrect. This international panel on fissile materials was established in 2006 with the aim of reducing the risk associated with the use of fissile materials in nuclear weapons and nuclear power programs. This panel provides technical and policy recommendations to governments, international organizations and civil society on fissile material and related issues. So the correct answer for this question is option D, neither one nor two. Look at this science page article. Currently, Kerala is facing an early onset of annual struggle with vector bond diseases. This is particularly with the emergence of West Nile fever. As of May 7, 2024, the health department had issued an alert and 20 suspected cases of West Nile fever has been reported. So in this context, let us quickly go through West Nile fever for our prelims exam. Know that this West Nile fever is caused by a virus that has been named as West Nile virus. It belongs to the genus Flavivirus. Even the Japanese encephalitis virus is also the same family. This virus and the disease are named after the district of Uganda where the virus was first isolated in 1937. This virus is commonly found in Africa, Europe, Middle East, North America and West Asia. Now talking about the transmission of this virus. Birds are the natural host or natural carrier of this West Nile virus. Mosquitoes became infected when they feed on the infected birds and then the infected mosquitoes through the bites transmit the virus to the humans. The transmission to human being is mainly by Culex mosquito. The disease can spread due to the contact with other infected animals, their blood or tissues. But there is no human to human transmission documented. Now talking about the symptoms of this West Nile fever. It is characterized by sudden onset of headache, malaise or uneasiness, fever, muscle pain, vomiting or rashes. The severity of symptom ranges from mild illness for a week to prolonged weakening for months. It can also cause fatal neurological disease among humans and this is called as West Nile Neuroinvasive Disease. Remember, almost 80% of people who are infected with the virus will not show any symptoms. So there is lot of chances this disease may go unnoticed and leads to an outbreak. One way to detect the presence of this virus in a region is by tracking the bird death and also the death of horses. The birds when infected with this disease die due to illness and hence the bird deaths act as a markers for transmission. 
Also note that there is no vaccines available to prevent or medications to treat West Nile virus. The measures to reduce the risk of West Nile virus includes using the insect repellent and wearing long sleeved shirts and long pants to prevent mosquito bites. So this is all about this discussion. Now let us move to the next news article. This editorial article talks about hypertension which remains a vastly under addressed risk factor for serious health conditions. So in this news article discussion let us learn briefly about hypertension. Now what is hypertension? Hypertension occurs when force of blood pushing through the blood vessels is consistently too high. To put it simply, when your blood is consistently pumping through your arteries with more force than normal, then it is termed as hypertension or high BP. According to medical standards, if the reading in BP monitor goes above 140 or 90 mm Hg, then it is termed as hypertension. Now what are the causes of hypertension? Mostly unhealthy life choices like lack of physical activity, high salt diet, smoking, drinking alcohol and eating unhealthy food can cause hypertension. Apart from this, the medical conditions like diabetes, obesity, kidney failure can also result in hypertension. So this is about the causes of hypertension. According to 2023 World Health Organization report which is titled Global Report on Hypertension, the Race Against a Silent Killer, the prevalence of hypertension has nearly doubled since 1990. So this is affecting 1.3 billion adults globally and it is a leading risk factor for premature deaths worldwide. 46 percentage of adults with hypertension are unaware of their condition and less than half of those diagnosed are adequately treated. As per ICMR India Diabetes Study, nearly 311 million adults in India have hypertension. This is three times higher than number of people living with diabetes. Hypertension affects a wide range of socioeconomic groups including women, migrant workers and low income individuals. One of the simplest remedy to reduce hypertension is to cut down excessive salt consumption. See average Indian adult consumes 8 to 11 grams of salt per day. This is far exceeding the WHO recommended limit of 5 grams. This high salt intake is linked to an estimated 1,75,000 deaths in India each year. So this is all about the discussion. Now let us move to the next news article. Look at this article from science page. It stresses on how artificial intelligence can help to identify a targeted protein and aids in drug development. With this backdrop, let us answer a mains question using our usual mains answer writing approach. See, this topic comes under GS paper 3. Now look at the question. Discuss how artificial intelligence can be used to meet India's socio-economic needs. Here the keyword is discuss. So we have to address the pros and cons on using the artificial intelligence in socio-economic development and we must also suggest a way forward. In the intro part, we have to briefly introduce the artificial intelligence and its applications. See, artificial intelligence refers to ability of machines to perform cognitive tasks like thinking, perceiving, learning, problem solving and decision making. India being the fastest growing economy has a significant stake in AI revolution. Experts believe that artificial intelligence could add at least a trillion dollars to our economy by 2035. Now coming to the body part of the answer, here we have to address how artificial intelligence can aid in India's socio-economic development. First is agriculture. See, artificial intelligence is used in precision farming. AI driven drones and sensors help in monitoring crop health, soil conditions and predicting yields. Nithi Aayog reports suggest that AI in agriculture can increase the farm productivity by 20 to 30 percentage. It is also used in market access. AI based platforms like Ninja Cart connect farmers directly to retailers thus reducing the middleman and increasing farmers income. Next about healthcare, diagnostics and treatment. Artificial intelligence tools like IBM Watson for oncology assist doctors in diagnosing and creating personalized treatment plans. AI is also used in education for personalized learning. Platforms like Khan Academy use AI to tailor educational content to individual learning paces and styles. NASCOM report indicates artificial intelligence in education can improve learning outcomes by 15 to 20 percentage. Then it is also used for access to quality education. AI driven virtual classrooms and language processing tools enable remote learning especially in rural areas. Next about governance and public services. AI can help in efficient service delivery. AI chatbots and e-governance platforms streamline public service 
delivery, thus reducing the bureaucratic delays. Implementation of AI in public services can reduce service delivery by 30 to 40 percentage. It is also used in fraud detection and increasing transparency. Next about urban planning and infrastructure. AI applications in traffic management, waste management and energy conservation enhance urban living standards. Smart city initiatives can reduce traffic congestion by 15 to 20 percentage and it also can reduce energy consumption. Next about financial inclusion. AI is used for credit scoring and risk assessment. AI tools analyze alternative data for credit scoring, enabling financial institutions to lend to undeserved populations. AI in fintech detects fraudulent transactions, ensuring secure financial operations. So this is all about the applications of AI. Now we have to mention the challenges in achieving the full potential of AI. First is lack of broad-based expertise in research and application of AI. Next is absence of enabling data ecosystem and access to intelligent data. Thirdly, high resource cost and low awareness for adoption of AI. Fourthly, privacy and security including lack of formal regulations and anonymization of data. Lastly, there is absence of collaborative approach to adoption application of artificial intelligence. Now we have come to the conclusion. Here we have to summarize the answer and give a positive way forward. AI has potential to transform India's socio-economic landscape by enhancing efficiency, increasing accessibility and fostering innovation across various sectors. However, to fully harness the benefits of AI, India must address several challenges including digital literacy, data privacy, infrastructure development and regulatory frameworks. So in this way we can end the answer. With this let us conclude the discussion. Now we have come to the prelims practice question discussion. Consider the following statements with reference to West Nile fever. Birds are the reservoir host. No vaccine is available for humans but available for animals. Sexual transmission is possible. Which of the statements given above is correct? Statement 1 is correct. Birds are the reservoir host. Statement 2 is also correct. Vaccine is not available only for humans. And look at the third statement, it is incorrect. Human to human transmission does not occur through sexual contact as it is not documented yet. So the correct answer for this question is option B, 1 and 2 only. Now look at the second question. The force that blood exerts against the wall of vessel is called blood pressure. A spigmomanometer is used to measure the blood pressure. Both of the statements are correct. This is a simple straightforward question. With this, let us conclude the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankar A.S. Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.